Kia ora tato. Thank you. And thanks to everybody um, who allowed us to uh, be here and welcomed us here, uh, particularly to myself and uh, my partner. Uh, we're super delighted to be here, so thank you. Um, you know, uh, many of our stories, if we go back far enough, are about uh, migration. And um, it's about when you arrive in a new land, um, making sure that you stay as a welcome guest um, and that you uh, are a steward of that land. Um, and my story of, of migration uh, started uh, about 150 years ago. Um, some folks in Norway uh, decided to leave there. They packed up their family boat, um, put in some salted herring, some potatoes, and got their 11 sons on as crew, and they left for a new land. And that new land was Aotearoa, New Zealand. Unfortunately, they never made it. It's not that they died at sea. If they had, I wouldn't be here. Um, <laughs> it's just that uh, they, they stopped in South Africa. I guess they got tired of the salted herring. And, um, and they settled there. Um, I was born there about 100 years later. And then um, I got on a boat when I was uh, growing up. And I sailed to the Americas um, and, then, uh, and then settled in the United States. So for me, um, coming here to New Zealand now is really the completion of a family journey. I'm 150 years late. <laughs> and uh, I see I've only got um, four minutes left. <laughs> so um, uh, let me um, uh, try to get on to the point of the discussion. Um, growing up in, in South Africa, it was very clear that that system was uh, completely unfair. But it also seemed to most people intractable. Um, but one person in particular um, showed us that it could be changed. And so when Nelson Mandela came along and, and basically just said, we're going to do things differently, um, you know, everyone fell in line. And uh, what was fascinating about that and has been fascinating about so many of these um, changes from inequality to equality, whether it's gender equality, marriage equality, um, they... The people who benefit are not just the formerly disadvantaged, but it's everyone uh, in that society that benefits. And so um, at some point, we will we'll get that. Um, and so it is with, with, with clean energy. Um, and so the idea that we're working on is how can we get more equitable access uh, to clean energy for folks? Um, and the reason that's important is demand for energy is going to continue to rise. Um, uh, we, you know, we see that uh, in terms of my ancestors thought that uh, salted herring was a pretty neat technology. Um, but most of us like refrigeration. Uh, we like lights. We like the internet. Some of us, even when we camp, we like electric blankets. <laughs> and um, and as, we, as we progress and try to make a more sustainable um, lifestyle, we're going to go to electric vehicles. We're going to go to you know, electronic currencies. And all of those things are going to take electrical energy. That's actually um, probably a good thing because we know how to make sustainable electrical energy. It's one of the easiest ones to make sustainable. Um, and particularly what we're seeing in some countries is distributed um, electrical energy where it's privately owned, um, small scale, and still connected to the grid. And what's interesting about that is when we connect it um, and have the right controls technology, we can actually have it so that we can make the grid a lot more uh, reliable and resilient. And that's important because we're going to need more people to adopt it if we're going to get the scale in order to um, mitigate climate change. And then if we're going to mitigate the impacts of climate change, we're going to need a more resilient grid. So as we see more storms, more droughts, more wildfires, more floods, and we have to deal with these things, it's going to be um, most excellent if we have the ability for communities to be able to disconnect from the grid from time to time uh, when they need to maintain their own power, provide services to others who are in trouble, and then reconnect to the grid uh, when, we, when we come back on. So um, what does that mean for uh, New Zealand? Well, a lot of the um, incentive structures that are happening outside the, uh, you know, in, in other countries have been actually quite successful at bringing on solar and, and other uh, types of renewables. The challenge has been that those incentives are often structured so that the people with the biggest houses, with the biggest electrical bills, and therefore probably the more affluent in the society, are the ones that are getting the cheaper, reliable solar. And um, 
the people who can't have access to that are actually subsidizing that. In the beginning, there's nothing wrong with that. You sort of get to 5% penetration, you get solar going, you demonstrate it, but it's not a sustainable way to get to real scale. So the opportunity for New Zealand here is to come up with a new model, a model where more people can get access to uh, renewable energy. And then to show how that works um, so that the rest of the world will look at New Zealand and say, okay, if they can do it, we can also do that. And that's how we can get global scale. So the benefits would be that not only would New Zealand have a cleaner grid and a more resilient grid, but that the rest of the world would then be able to adopt um, more, more renewables. Um, so uh, just like you know, New Zealand um, wouldn't be able to solve climate change on its own, um, my partner and I can't solve this problem on our own uh, either. So we'd like to invite you this afternoon to our circle um, right after lunch. Uh, to discuss how we can get equitable access to renewable energy, and we'd love to hear your contribution and, um, and your comments. Thank you very much.